Hey, I want to thank you for joining us this morning. I know God is going to be here this morning. He's going to do some great things in our service. So we're here and we're ready for service this morning. Uh, all of our greeters are in place. Things are going great. We're expecting God to do great things in our message today. And so I'm glad you're joining us and we look forward to talking with you right after the service. God bless you. Before the virus came, people were dying. After the virus is gone, people will still die. That's what we're told. Why am I going to worry about the day, the virus, or the method in which I die? I think God wants me to really focus my energy on what if he brings me through? What's he's expecting from me? We can worry about our relationships. We worry about our children, our house, and our pets. I know our kids, Megan is in the healthcare uh, industry. She's a critical care nurse, and she's working right in the midst of the storm. She's a mother of our four grandchildren, and that's difficult for us to watch her. But you know what? We're not worried. We keep saying, God, you've got her in your arms, and you're sheltering her. You're protecting what is precious to us. But somebody has to be on those front lines. Somebody has to be caring for the sick. And God, you're using our daughter to do it. We thank you for that. Our son, Jordan, was released from work for a while because of the, the loss of uh, business in his company. He's a mechanic at, a, at a, a big dealership in Kansas City. And because the business isn't coming in, because the social distancing is important, people aren't bringing their vehicles in to be worked on because they don't know if they have money for the future. They're making different decisions. And so it's impacting my son's life and his ability to supply the needs for his family. But I love it when he said to me, Dad, God's going to take us through this storm. Our son Jonathan is home. His company, AT&T, has closed their stores to ensure that they don't uh, break any of the social distancing regulations and, and to, make, frankly, be good citizens in this time. And so Jonathan is home from work. We're thankful his company is paying him while he's off for the next two weeks. But we don't know what the future holds, but we know God's going to take care of him. Maddie is working at Strategic Wealth here in town, and she is, they've had to change some of their processes to ensure that they stay um, at social distance and that they are working. But, you know, in all of that, we look at it and say, God, thank you for still providing for them. It may be different than it was the day before, but thank you for providing for them. We worry about everything. Worry isn't new. Jesus thought worry was such an important topic that he spent a major section of this most famous sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, talking about worry. In fact, in that Sermon on the Mount, Jesus gives us some reasons we should not worry. He says, first, worry's unreasonable. It doesn't make sense. Do not be worried about the food. Do not be worried about the things that you need because the Heavenly Father is going to take care of you. He's going to put the clothes on your back. He's going to put food in your cabinet. I went out and I thought, man, we don't, we're running low on food. We, we are really running low in the pantry. And then I go look in the pantry and there's food like crazy. I go look in the freezer and it's packed. It's just that we're so used to grabbing those easy things that this is causing us to think about our meals a little differently. God will supply your needs. Worry always exaggerates the problems in our life. Problems don't shrink when you think about them. They only grow. If you're concentrating on the disease, your fear of it only grows. Do you know what I personally believe? That if you are so concentrated on getting sick, you will get sick because it opens up the portals of your body to, to receive it. Because if that's what you're thinking on, that's what you're going to take in. 
I want to think on those things which are good and pure. And I want to believe that my God is able to keep me. And so I'm going to keep believing God has secured me. He has taken care of me. We're the only creation in the entire universe that worries. I drive by cows every morning. I never see them hunkered down and shaking and worrying. I drive by and see dogs and cats. I watch diesel, John and Jordan's, or John and Maddie's uh, big 179-pound dog in our house. That dog is not worried about its next meal. That dog is not worried about where it's going to sleep at night. Ladybug, our dog, isn't worried about any of it. She's just going along. We humans are the ones who are worriers. In Matthew 6, 26, Jesus says, Look at the birds. They do not plant. They gather the harvest and put in the barns. Yet your Father in heaven takes care of them. And we are worth more than that to him. I don't want you to worry about things that are not important. Second, worry is unnatural. We look at the worry. We weren't meant to worry. We were meant to trust God. See, in that garden, in Adam and Eve were put there. They had dominion over everything. And it wasn't meant for them to worry or struggle. The struggle only came when disobedience came into our hearts. I think about that a lot of times in our own life. Mine and Tony's life, we've seen the biggest struggles in our life when we were disobedient to God. When we knew God wanted us to be faithful in an area and we chose not to, whether it be to church, or to our finances, to our tithes, to our savings, we found that we struggled when we were disobedient. Be obedient to God. He has promised to keep us. It is only when we get outside of that promise that we struggle. Thirdly, today, worry isn't helpful to us. You see, worry can't make you taller. It can't make you shorter. It certainly hasn't worked to take 10 pounds off from me. It it doesn't lengthen your life. It actually shortens it. Worry doesn't change the past. And worry will never control the future. It just messes everything up in your life. Don't worry. Become victorious in what you are concentrating on in your life. The only thing that changes in you is it makes you miserable. You know, when you're constantly running from this crisis to that crisis, this problem to that problem, it's really easy to become someone no one wants to be around. You get lost in your misery. And Jesus came to lift us out of it. There's that old hymn that says, I was in the miry clay and he came and he lifted me out of the miry clay. He set my feet upon the rock to stay. Some of you are surprised I remember those words, but I do remember those words. Jesus is our hope today. Fourth, I would ask you and tell you that worry is unnecessary. It was God who clothed the birds. It's God who gives the grass, and it's him who will burn it all up in the oven. Won't he be all the more sure to clothe you? What little faith you have, we see in Matthew 30. God will meet your needs. He created you. He saved you. He put his faith in you when, he placed, when you placed your trust in him. The moment you asked Jesus to come into your life, he came in and he said, I'm going to sustain you. I'm going to take you places you've never been before. I'm going to bless you in ways you've never been blessed before. And Jesus is standing at the precipice of where we are today. There's a song that was written a long time ago, and I know who sang it. I won't tell you because you'll laugh at me, but it said, we're on the brink of our miracle. 
Don't give up. You're on the brink of your miracle. I believe we're on the brink of a miracle in our lives. I believe that we are standing right at the edge of what God is about to do. And so I encourage you to reach out and embrace it. Reach out and take a hold of it. Reach out and grab that anointing that only comes from him. I'm reminded of those three Hebrew children. When they threw them in the fire and they wanted them burned up. And when they looked back in the fire, they saw there wasn't just three, but there were four. And they were not burned. The Bible tells us they came out without even the smell of smoke on them. I believe the church is going to come out more powerful than it's ever been. And there will not be the smell of death or or smoke on the church. The church is bringing hope. We're reaching people. And I think God is going to honor that. Today, I want to ask you, some really important questions. What are you worrying about that you can turn over and give to God? That unreasonable thing that you are spending your energy on, what is it today? Maybe you would say, Pastor, the thing I'm most worried about right now is my soul. Maybe you've tuned in today You're watching our Facebook page and you're coming from a place of emptiness and loneliness. I want you to know that Jesus loves you. He cares about you. If you had been the only one, God would have done what he did for all of us. He would have sent his son to die on a cross so that you would be saved. This morning, I want to ask you this question. Do you know Jesus? Whether you go to church or not is not important. What's important is do you have Jesus Christ in your heart? Have you heard the knock at the door, the Holy Spirit speaking to you, saying, I need to know him? If you would like to know Jesus, would you mind typing in your little message box, that's me? We'll know then that you want us to pray for you and we will reach out to you and we will help you in this time. We will encourage you with words from the scriptures that will give you hope and allow you to come away from all the fear. If you have a special need this morning, will you type it into your Facebook window? Just whatever that need is. We have people online who are watching those right now. They will gather those for me and we'll make sure that they get a part of our prayer chain. We're expecting God to do something. Maybe you know Jesus. You've served him. But maybe it's grown cold. You've allowed yourself to get carried away in fear and worry. If that's you, this morning, I believe God wants to do something in your life. That oppression and depression that comes and sets like a dark cloud over you, Jesus Christ wants to lift it from you. When he calls himself our burden bearer, that's what it is. He's going to lift those burdens from you and allow joy to come into your life. So if that's you, will you spend just a moment and write a little note to us? Just type the words, that's me. I need it. I need Jesus. I'm going to lead you in this prayer. And I know you're in your homes, but I want you to pray this prayer with me. I want you to say it out loud in your homes. Moms, dads, kids, grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles, friends, say these words and mean it in your heart. Will you pray? Dear Jesus, come into my life. I want you 
to be the Lord of everything. Lord, would you come in and cleanse the sin from me? Will you wash me whole? Will you make me new again? Lord, lift my burden. Lord, take all of the worry and disappointment in my life and will you take it away? Lord, help me to see you as my healer, as my redeemer, as my salvation. And Father, will you send the Holy Spirit to rest and give me comfort? I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, would you all look at me? If you're there, would you look directly at your television or your PC screen or your laptop or your iPhone, whatever it is, I want you to know that we here at New Life love you. And we, boo, we, do, we, boo, we do believe that new life has begun in you today. When we go before the Father, we trust him that he hears us and that he will make a change in your life. And so today, if that change has happened, let us know on our Facebook page. You may uh, private message us and let us know. But we want to share and rejoice in what God has done. I tell my church every single Sunday, if you have a church, go to that church. Be faithful to it. If you don't have a church and you want to be in a Bible-believing church, come here to New Life. We want you here. If you have a Bible-believing church, that's where you belong. You need to be there and be faithful to them. They need you. Find a way to get engaged in your church. It will make your life so much happier. We're asking you to rely on the Holy Spirit and to know that Jesus Christ is with you. We love you. Please visit us at our Facebook page, New Life Barnett. You can also go to our uh, webpage at New Life Barnett, um, and you can um, access all of our schedules, all of our services, as well as access any of our points of um, giving, and we would encourage you to do that. You may also write a letter here to the church, P.O. Box 102 at Barnett, Missouri, 65011. We'd love to hear from you. Please tell us your story. Tell us how these times are changing you and what you see God doing in your life. Put a note for us here on the Facebook page. We want to be able to let other people share in the joy and the things that you're learning. Make sure you're sharing the page. You can cl simply click on share. You can put a note in there and then it will share out to all of your friends. It's a great way to invite people to church that you may struggle getting them to come on a Sunday morning. I would also encourage you to um, uh, make some comments that are positive. Push that little like button as much as you can. That will help us boost up the page and get people hearing it. If you think these are important words for our time, we want you to help us share it. It's our responsibility in our community. Versailles, Barnett, Eldon, California, Osage Beach, Camdenton, Lowry City, uh, Tipton, Gravoy Mills, uh, all of these areas we have people coming from and we love you and we're proud of you. We know God is going to do good things in your life. God bless you. Isn't God great? did a great thing today in our service. We're seeing the Spirit of God move. Every single week, God is doing something wonderful here. We're seeing lives change. People dedicate themselves to God, and we're glad you're a part of it. So thanks for joining us this morning. We look forward to you coming back. If you have questions or need more information, please don't hesitate to give us a call here at the church. Visit our Facebook page or go to our website. We're new, it went new life. We're expecting new life to happen in our community. God bless you.